increasingly we're getting asked questions about how often we should be changing our bathroom towels or our bed sheets, replacing them with new ones, how often we should be washing them and maintaining them. These are all great questions and there's not a lot of great data to support precise recommendations, but if I look back at the medical literature and take what we do know and apply it practically speaking to what we should or ought to consider, it can help because then we can make more evidence-based decisions in this category and not be driven by marketing that of course is going to tell you to just buy new sheets because that's the only way they're going to make more money. So you really want to focus in on understanding why you would need to change your bathroom towels and not look at time factors when you bought it and how many days have elapsed since that date. That's not going to help you a lot because it all really is more use dependent than time dependent. And of course, there's really, a, it's very difficult to gauge how much one person might use their towels versus another, how well they maintain them through their laundering practices too. Of course, these companies want you to buy more towels and to buy more bed sheets, but remember there's a sustainability part of this equation that I don't want to get lost where we're not wasting money or uh, developing more waste products as a result of tossing out perfectly good towels or bed sheets that didn't necessarily need to be changed out if there was nothing truly wrong with them. So it's all about not just how long you've had the product, but how you use it and how you maintain it. Now the second factor is the use factor. Now this is a much more important factor because ultimately how often you use the towel might impact the wear and tear on the towel. So as you use the towel, say for example, you have two or three towels in your rotation. You have two in the sort of linen closet and one that's hanging on your bathroom rod. You go to take a shower, you take the towel off, you dry off with it, you place it back on the rod, it air dries, that moisture evaporates away from the towel, you're maintaining it in its best shape possible. Say you're washing it once or twice a week based on how often you're using the towel and also washing it with best laundering practices, which we'll go over in a second. And it's maintaining its integrity through this process, meaning there's no significant wear and tear where you're breaking down some of the fibers of that towel and it's maintained its overall integrity and you're probably in pretty good shape. There are some studies that have shown that the more absorbent a towel, which is very common for people to want to get because they're softer against our skin, but the more absorbent a towel is, the more it holds onto moisture, actually that can predispose the towel to an increase in bacterial overgrowth only because it can take longer for that moisture to evaporate away from the textile. By sitting there in the textile for longer stretches of time can serve as an opportunity for bacteria to overgrow. Ironically, however, the longer you have a towel, the less absorbent it is through the breakdown of some of those fibers over time. So theoretically, that means that less bacteria can accumulate in there and the, the textile itself. So that's not always a reason, again, to have to go out and buy a new towel based on any kind of bacterial concerns. The key is really the other factor, the last factor, which is how you maintain your, your towels and your bench sheets over time. Laundering practices really do matter. And this is something we should go over in much more detail only because how you maintain the integrity of the towel is really based on your laundering practices. Yes, there's natural wear and tear that our textiles go through. When you're wiping down your skin, there's some pull and tug on those textiles. When you air dry the textile and that water evaporates away from the textile, there can be some dryness that can break down or fray some of the fibers that are in there. But the laundering practices is not just about, you know, cleaning the garment, it's about maintaining it in its best shape possible. And this can be achieved with the right products that you integrate into the process. I've learned a lot about this over the past year or two, and I definitely feel like we need to talk more about it because I was always under the impression years ago that if you wash your textiles, you're breaking them down faster, and that it was kind of a necessary process we had to go through just to clean them. But I felt like there was this wear and tear that would develop through the laundering practice. What I never realized is that we can reduce that tendency just by washing our clothes the right way. 
So best laundering practices for textiles to maintain them in their best integrity over time would be one, not overloading the laundry machine. You want to wash the right amount of textiles where, especially for front loading washing machines, you want to make sure your arm can actually stick in above the load. So that way, you know, there's enough space clearing that surface of the textiles and not that they're so overloaded that there's no space there. And it's a practical thing. You need movement of the garments and the textiles in the laundry to actually get some of that dirt and debris to come off of the clothing and actually be released into the water to be pulled out into the out of the machine. Otherwise, it might just redeposit back on the, the laundry, which we don't want to have. Also remember as a part of the laundering practice, recognizing that there's residues that actually build up on our garments and our textiles that can impact the integrity of the textile itself. Residues would be things like residue left over from soap and shampoos and conditioners, skincare products that get left on the towels or bed sheets as well. If there's residues left behind, and just like when you have, say, a residue left on a kitchen table, that's a wooden table, if you don't wipe it away, it's going to start to break down some of the enamel or any of the surface finishes of your table just by sitting there. So the same thing can happen in our textiles. We want that residue to be lifted off the same way we want to clean off tabletops and other things. Otherwise, it will start to break down the integrity of the textile. This is where fabric rinses really come into play because they can really help reduce that residue by lifting it away from the textile at the right point in the laundering cycle where that pH of the water is lowered in such a way so that residues lift off very easily. And the last step is recognizing the role that fabric softener plays. This is again, likening it to hair is the simplest way to think of it. Fibers in, in textiles are very simple, similar to hair fibers. If you just wash your hair with shampoo alone and don't realize that there is there are some natural oils that are stripped away from our hair that we sometimes need to replace just to give that sort of smooth texture to the hair, then your hair will show dryness, fraying, and easy breakage. The same thing happens in our textiles. If you just wash your textiles with detergent alone and not include fabric softener in the actual next step where you're actually adding in hydration or conditioning those fibers, the same thing will happen. You will dry out those fibers. They will break or fray easily, especially in the heat of the dryer. So recognizing the role of a good fabric softener and maintaining the longevity of your textiles will help. By doing those steps though, you will notice that you don't necessarily have to go and just toss your towels out every six months because again, if you're cleaning them appropriately, you're getting rid of any residues, bacteria that can build up in, this, in the textile itself, maintaining the integrity of the textile as long as possible, and focus on only changing out your towels or bed sheets when they actually show visible signs of aging, where there's fraying or breakage of the textiles, any kind of breakdown in the integrity of the textile, Absolutely, but these upon visual inspection should be pretty obvious to you. It's not something that you have to just base on a time factor alone. I was asked by a patient why we even have to wash towels in the first place, and the question was pretty sincere, was saying, well, look, I only use my towel when I'm clean. You know, I get out of the shower, I am clean, and then I wipe dry with the towel, hang it out to dry, is the towel even dirty? And that's a really good question because when you put it like that, it kind of makes sense that, well, the towel is clean because you're using it on a clean body, a clean person, but also recognize that there are certain bacteria, yeast, and viruses that can withstand the cleaning process when you do take a shower and can be transferred onto the towel because towels are considered a fomite. A fomite is an object that actually can serve to harbor bacteria, yeast, and viruses from the environment and let them live there on the textile itself in the crevices of the fibers or sometimes residues that might be left behind on the textile from residues from our skin that might be left there too. That has actually been shown in the medical literature to serve as a means of transfer from one person to the next. So say, for example, you had a tendency towards um, Staphylococcus bacteria, MRSA, sometimes even in the literature, they've seen cases of molluscum and herpes being transferred between two people. 
happens again, even though you may be cleaned off just by soap cleaning the skin itself, bacteria can sometimes withstand this process and be transferred onto the towel. If another person comes along and uses the same towel, there can be inadvertent transfer of that bacteria yeast or viruses to their skin. So the real reason to clean towels is because even though they're clean, they're not sterile. There is still gonna be some growth of bacteria and yeast that's natural in the fiber and on our skin, quite frankly, that we don't always escape in this process. So we wanna make sure we're not serving as a reservoir to transfer between family members or friends in the same household. So just making sure you do maintain your towels by washing them routinely, recognizing that we need to maintain these textiles in their best form possible and that there will be some overgrowth of bacteria, yeast, and viruses at some point that, again, appropriate laundering practices should be able to address.